Bak Bitun is a Maya archaeological site located in the Cayo district of West Central Belize. It lies approximately 21 kilometers south of Cayo's capital, San Ignacio, and is about three kilometers east of San Antonio Village, where young glyph artist Frank Zib lives. In fact, I visited the site with Frank and both of his parents. The modern Maya name given to the site means stones set in earth, likely a reference to multiple fragments of stone monuments present. Epigrapher Barbara McLeod suggests that the original Mayan name for the site may have been Bak Bitun, with a glottal accent on the K, and the L dropped, meaning more like stones set in mortar. First reported in the 1970s, Papitun was excavated extensively in the late 20th century by archaeologist Paul F. Healy of Trent University and in the early 21st century by Terry G. Powis of Kennesaw State University, who reigns as a site principal investigator. Field director Sheldon Skaggs will be guiding us around the site today. Papitun is a medium-sized site located along the southern rim of the Belize River Valley region. It is situated in the foothills of the Maya Mountains at the juncture of two contrasting ecozones, the tropical rainforest and the mountain pine ridge. Pakpitun, at about 240 meters above sea level, is one of the earliest known sites in the southern Maya lowlands and was inha inhabited for almost 2,000 years from around 900 BCE to 900 CE. The Belize River Valley is one of the earliest known settled regions in the Maya lowlands, originating at sites like Black Manetti and Cajal Petch, founded around 1100 BCE. As a medium-sized regional center, the site's periphery zone encompasses eight square kilometers, while its epicenter and core cover half a square kilometer and one square kilometer, respectively. The epicenter of Pakpitun was constructed on an east-west orientation atop a limestone knoll. It was first settled during the Middle Preclassic period as a small farming community, likely drawn to the fertile soils, numerous tributaries, and diverse resources. The epicenter slowly expanded throughout the Classic period and eventually had over 40 masonry constructions, some up to 12 meters tall, including temple pyramids, palace-like range buildings, a ball court, five plazas, two lengthy causeways, and a number of smaller courtyard groups. The epicenter is also marked by the remains of 20 stella and altars, three of which exhibited traces of carved Mayan hieroglyphic writing, and these physical manifestations are clear indicators of a rank society and an emerging elite class. Structure 2 bounds the edge of Plaza A and acts as the western component of a Belize Valley E-group variant. Plaza A situated five meters above the residential area in Plaza B, appears to be the ritual and ceremonial hub during the Classic period from around 550 to 800 CE. Ready? Uh, I'm Sheldon Skaggs from Bronx Community College mm -hmm. in City University of New York. Uh, welcome to the site of Pac Bitoon. Uh, Terry Powis, from Kennesaw State University is the permit holder for this site and Guacamayo. Uh, I am the field director and I will be guiding you through the tour today. Great. Archaeological investigations by the Pakbitun Regional Archaeological Project recently unearthed a large platform in the main plaza, Plaza A. The platform, designated as Q, is unlike any other early ceremonial construction excavated in the Maya lowlands. Their excavation of this platform sheds new light on the foundation, nature, and development of early social and political structure of Pakbitun, 
and shapes our perception of public activities of the Maya lowlands during the middle pre-classic period. So in 2012, I came down from Bronx Community College, City University in New York, and in this entire Plaza A, they told me I could ground, use ground penetrating radar to see if I could find anything. So I took a little lawnmower type device, sent radar waves down into the ground, looked at the reflections for the entire plaza here. And they said, you have a one meter by four meter hole you can dig in the plaza, find us something. All right, so here's where we used to park the cars. Under here, I found uh, a large uh, feature that had clay layers that sloped like this. It was different than anything else I'd seen in the plaza. Clay, layers. Area. clay like marl. Now, when you're trying to do GPR on limestone versus limestone rocks, it's very hard, but those clay layers were a lot different. And so it showed a big, uh, kind of like a really big U shape around here, wow. just going out. And it was way too big. It's like 30 meters across. And Terry's like, ah, oh, that's, that's way too old you know, to be something that big. But under here is the structure called El Cumado, which is a platform that is two meters tall with sloping stairs in both directions from 800 to 600 BC. And so it set the ancient Plaza A boundary. And so, like I said, it goes all the way, the size of structure three, it's that size, it's a 30 by 20 meter platform from the middle pre-classic period. Hmm. You can't see it because we're not excavating it again, <laughs> but it took five seasons to excavate it completely because wow. it's a very, very big building. Well, what about the standing stone over there? Uh, that's a stela over there. We have 21 stelas around the site and altars, wow. which is quite a large number. Uh, under the canopy, we have stela six, which has actually got carvings on it. You can't oh. see it, it's underground, but that's why we have it covered is so that hopefully, uh, we can dig it up, it's, it's in many, many fragments, and so the interpretation has been difficult. Someday we're hoping to be able to reconstruct it and get really good detailed photos so that they can do a better job on the inscriptions. Do you find any caches by the Stella? Yeah, uh, yeah actually, uh, I just, we, we didn't know, it was just, it was, it was sitting flat on the terminal floor, uh, and so we didn't know where the butt was for that Stella. We think we found it right in front of Structure 5 uh, in 2021. And it had some early classic uh, ceramic caches at the oh, bottom yeah. of that and a burial. So hmm. that, that's what I got to do in, in 2021. Any still has inscriptions? That one over there does. And uh, Christoph Helmke has done his best interpretation of that, but we're hoping someday to, to get it back in a lab where you can get the lighting just right to make it even better. There's plenty of stuff that hasn't been in. Uh, hasn't been able to be translated because you just can't see it out here in the lighting. True. Yeah, so, you know, if we get fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, we maybe will be able to pull it out and get it reassembled in a lab and get the rest of the inscriptions off of it. Hmm. But that's for future days. <laughs> so this is our E group over here. You have structure one, which is the tallest. Uh, that's where uh, Paul Healy found the tomb and all of the burials. And then we have structures four and five on either side which is the E-group alignment with structure two, the reconstructed structure. Oh. And so this is all, like I said, this is all late classic, but the building that's under here and what we're gonna see at the excavations is all a thousand years earlier than that. Wow. And so they, that, the sloping layers I found <laughs> is where the Maya, you know, they had a building and they just started dumping dirt. And so the dirt <coughs> starts like this. And then you can see as they filled it in more and more, the layers eventually become flat and they flattened the whole plaza out, and then they built all the buildings that you see today on top of that newly flattened plaza area. Wow. But it's, they keep the center line, they, they, they don't really extend the height more than the distance of these buildings. So the plaza's always been almost this large. The wow. buildings are just a little bit, maybe a couple meters further back than the original plaza from 2000 years ago. And so that's what we're looking at at the south end of the plaza down here, what we're currently doing excavations on are the structures that match El Cumado on the south side of the plaza. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. so these rock alignments along here, 
are on the same uh, level as El Cumado is on the other side. So 600 BC likely for time frame. They continue with a lot of this is back dirt. We were just opening this up to expose these and try and do some more on the western side. But the alignment, this alignment itself goes all the way out to that tree stump over there. So another three meters or so. So this alignment actually covers the entire length on this end of the plaza as El Cumado does on the front side. So that's how we know the size of the plaza. And we haven't found, there's a little bit of architecture at the very lowest levels along the front of these buildings. But that gives us, the plaza is the same size as it was 2,000 years ago. <clears throat> we haven't traced or followed the north-south alignments here. <laughs> because we just don't have the time to keep going further and further in. But this alignment goes all the way down, all the way across here, under the roots, and then up to where the gentlemen are excavating and mapping up over there. And so then they plaster the whole area over, and they put in a round structure, which goes, it's about a nine meter diameter round structure that goes all the way over to where those guys are over there back under building six. Again, this has all been excavated, what we're standing on, but there are two square buildings above the uh, round structure. They're up on top of the round structure and a circular building in the center. And that the two, one of the ones over here has a fire pit. And I think we're still waiting on the charcoal date on the fire pit, but a lot Why would on. these kind of alignments of stones mean the end of the plaza? Well, it, it may not the end of the plaza per se, but uh, he's just found where it turns. So they're probably the front of the functional plaza and the, whatever they're doing back here, it looks like it's buildings based on uh, what we've seen. We just haven't been able to get down and, and find post holes for these. Hmm. Again, we don't have, what you're standing on is pretty much unexcavated until we take a 30 meter chunk out of the front. We won't know for sure, but that's the, wow. the current interpretation. It's just too much dirt to move with our crew. I mean, so is the bottom layer the layer of the plaza? Or it's the layer of the uh, bottom of El Cumado's plaza. It kind of slopes down that direction. So it's a little higher on this side than it is over there. But that is the the level that El Cumado is on. So what you were saying about El Cumado mm -hmm. is actually El Cumado is kind of like coming in this angle. Yeah. Slanting inwards. And yeah. this is slanting. Yeah. So you exactly. have like yes. a, a right. convectional almost. Yes. Yeah. And El Cumado is really only about that far below the surface. The, to the very top. Mm -hmm. And they filled in and made that, that plaza floor over on that side. So the rest of <laughs> the next thousand years is all in <laughs> about that, that much true? height until you get to the next floor above it. So it really isn't that deep uh, on you know where the top of that building is, but it is a two meter tall structure. So on that side, it's uh, about two and a half, three meters deep over on the other side. Wow. So they lo this looks very similar to the architecture in Carl Pitch. Mm -hmm. Remember back yeah. in 2015? Right, yeah. Remember yeah. with the dog like um, Plaza G? Mm -hmm. It was the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, and like I said, there is other stuff back here that is not exposed because the, the goal for this one was to figure out a little bit more of the round structure and to follow this. We were hoping it turned here, and then we were hoping it turned here, and then we were hoping <laughs> <laughs> that it turned here. This is where Terry believes that alignment actually turns. Yeah. Oh, yes. So it is a long stone alignment. <laughs> Same thing in Calpech, you know, as I told you, 2015, we thought it would be like one of those round structures that right. are very common in, in Cal, like in Calpech. Mm -hmm. When it turned out to be like those cross uh, yeah. rocks aligned, you know. Right. And so according to to Jaime, uh -huh. he said like they use that for filling to build on top of that. Could be. So yeah. Interesting. And then 
on top of the round structure, we have a building where you can actually see the drip lines, and we've got different color on the interior well, or the exterior. But go on, it wasn't the goal for this season, so we don't have it exposed. True. But you can see pictures in the progress reports of that one. Do you find any ceramic shards or anything? Yeah, they again, we're we're almost at the level of backfilling, so they're not doing any excavations. We'll be backfilling tomorrow, so they're just doing the final mapping. Uh, down in the lab, we've got all the, the middle pre-classic and for the round structure, late pre-classic ceramics that back up. The, so the you'll dates. be filling this all back in? Yeah, we'll be filling it. We have to do it every single time. You Just bring, wait till you get you down to Plaza B. With, with dirt? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're looking at the dump trucks right here. <laughs> <laughs> they love God. backfill day, right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> These are the dump oh, trucks. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> this is even bigger. Oh, you live yeah. in San Antonio, or where yeah. do you live? San Antonio. Yeah. yeah. We try and hire from every family in San Antonio. Really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All the major families are so represented. The is over until next year. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah we're just you got here just at the right time maximum exposure right before we start backfilling. Wow. Yeah. That's what Terry said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it's perfect. Make time. sure to get there before it's, noon. Yeah, <laughs> before noon because we're gonna start back. So will you be the one to write this up? Uh, Terry will be writing this because I haven't d worked these actual excavations this year. Mm -hmm. I've been out in the periphery looking at uh, this is we know for a fact that uh, Pack Bitune takes granite from the mountain pine ridge. Mm -hmm. They form it into monos and metates and then we believe they ship it out because we have evidence right now of about 30,000 metates and monos based on the waste that we've found. And that's clearly too Whoa. much for a population of five or 10,000 and mm -hmm. you know and so. Hmm. We believe they're exporting monos and metates. Well, yeah. And that's what I've been working on this year. Okay. And yeah. I was going to ask you guys about Pitun has also been known for the for being that trading center for right. producing and not yeah. only the proximity to what you just yeah, natural right. resource. But they also are known connect correct me if I'm wrong mm -hmm. about the musical Right, instrument. musical instruments, yes. So as you're driving out and on the left, before you take the turn, that's where in 2013, Kong was doing that group and they found the 13 ceramic flutes. Wow. And they look like little Ewoks, is kind of what we call them. They're, they're, you can see pictures of them and stuff. And they, he played them, he, Paulo, and Terry played them at one of the BASs. Wow. Yeah, yeah. One of them, yeah. So yes, that's a good video to find if you can find it. Oh, it's on, on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, it's on, it's on YouTube, yes. Nice. Nice. So, yeah. I know there are more um, and more of the items have right. been known, for example, yeah. to have been created mm -hmm. from mold. Right, yes, and have all of these been Yes, made? these were all mold created. We can actually see the defects in the series that we've got where you can see the molds breaking down as you go, you know, you see the first one or early one, then you see chips in the mold start in the progressive, in, just in the 13 that we've got. And I think we found, uh, John Spinard found in one of the caves, a mold for part of the ceramics. So oh, yeah. it's not for those instruments, but it's uh, some of that terminal classic molded pottery type of stuff. Yeah. I was going to say, that yeah. I think it's right yeah. within the Rio Frio right. twin caves. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that area. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mark Van Stone would like to hear about the Maya mold. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so any other questions up here in Plaza A before we move to the courtyards and Plaza B? So this is Plaza B. You can see the backside of Structure 2. Structure 2 kind of separates Plaza A from Plaza B and the elevation difference between the two. On the south side, all the way along the plaza is uh, what we call courts one, two, and three. It's likely the palace structure for the elite. It's all uh, 400 AD to 900 AD in terms of when it was put in, um, based on my excavations. I've done uh, units in all three of the courtyards. And so we'll go down uh, to one that Paul Healy left open so you can still see some of the architecture uh, in court two. It'll give you a sense of the rooms, and I'll talk about what I found in court three and court two. Great. Mm -hmm. This is the front of structure 23. It's the Plaza B side, 
behind on the other on the south side is court two this is not reconstructed this is exactly as paul healy found it the only thing that we did this year is we flattened things out and backfilled the areas but we decided to leave the architecture that cassandra bill found in place so they haven't replaced any of these stones in fact they've probably taken stones down as they were excavating so it was even more you know ones that fall off that could have been reconstructed but uh, because they didn't do that like they did with uh, two this is about as be the best view you'll get of the Meyer architecture that is not backfilled so we'll go up and we'll look you can run along the spine wall because all the rooms are still exposed and then I'll talk about what I found in court two and then we'll go over to look at court three and I'll talk about what I found wow. in court and three that would have been plastered it likely would have been plastered. Uh, this is uh, the interior or the front. Before, before uh, there was a staircase that went through here, and then in the late, late classic, they put the spine wall across and, and blocked access. So likely before you could have gone through here, and then they, this is the terminal uh, exposure here that blocks everything off. But there was stairs that went up and over before. Hmm. Uh, Stairs. Yeah. yeah, stairs to go up and over, and it would have been two separated buildings, and then they, they block them off, and then they put the spine wall in the rooms on top to make it into a, a plaza side of rooms and a court side of rooms. Did you find sort of like the, the door down? Uh, they, when they, they, this has been uh, tunneled up, you know, in the center. They put a unit all the way down, so we're not, we didn't obviously break the stones for this part of it. So, but in the center, they found plaster floors and things that suggest it went all the way through. But I don't, I can't tell you exactly where the stairs were. But we, we do know that the spine wall is very late and that it used to have be able to go all the way through the building. Yeah, and I know that because I went through the other building on Court Three. So I can I can talk about that one more definitively. This was done in the 80s. So this is gonna be like exposed. It's gonna yeah, it's gonna stay like that. Again, this is what how Paul left it with back dirt and all, and we've oh. leveled it out oh, yeah. and cleaned. Because again, in the 80s they didn't have to backfill. Yeah. And so Paul's method would be to start here excavating, and excavate this way, throwing the dirt yeah. behind you, and that's how they backfilled. <laughs> that was the standard. Yeah, exactly. It's just standard in, practice. Uh... And there were benches. Uh, when we get over on that side, we'll talk about the slate slabs that were found by Cassandra Bill and then later by us. But my idea was I was going to do a center unit in court one, a center unit in court two, and a center unit in court three just to get the number of floors. We came down here onto a round structure. So at the same time, you have what's going on under the excavations over there at 600 BC. They have a 12 to 13 meter diameter round structure that goes all the way under the building there to the center of this courtyard and all the way to about where we're standing. That's the size of the round structure. Yeah. It is huge. We've, we've got about uh, maybe 40, 50% of it excavated huh. in the last two or three years. So we, and we know what the, the diameter is. I found a bit of it under there. We've had all the way exposed up to the edge of this building and Cassandra found another chunk of it in this center unit, didn't realize it was a round structure. But, it's but a, the structure would have been up to it, the... it would have been, uh, it's about that far below the floor there. So it's level with Plaza B and the stuff that you'll see that they're excavating you know, over there. I mean, there. passed under here? Yeah, in before other words, these buildings weren't, yeah. Built? the Before they did anything, they have the square and oval buildings that you'll see shortly about uh, a meter deeper than the plaza floor is currently. Huh. And there was a round structure up here, uh, four course tall, round, two stones wide, round structure, 12 meters. Then at the same time they resurfaced, re, uh, did, filled in El Cumado, mm -hmm. they filled in all of this area by about a half meter of midden and, and marl fill. Then they put down the plaza floors and they put up all these buildings. So this is completely redone. It's a huge area to, to re, wow. resurface. Yeah. So, a big renovation. Yeah, a whole big renovation in the late pre-classic. The, the wall is very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. to note the, the wall you said for the round structure wasn't uh -huh. very wide, meaning no, yeah, it was only going two, by, yeah. by what you're suggesting, mm -hmm. it didn't really go, it wasn't a huge. No, no. It was somewhat. No, right. And we, don't, we didn't find any post holes or burials or anything. So we think it's probably a ceremonial mm -hmm. dance platform or speaking platform rather than some, where someone was living. 
I mean, that's a, a guess to some degree, but that's our best interpretation of what it was. And why it's this, because if you, if you get adventurous and you walk around the other side of these buildings, there, it drops right off to the road that you came in. And so on court three, there's actually about a 30 meter height differential from the top of court three down to the road. So this is right on the edge of a natural drop off. Wow. So I don't know why they put the round structure here instead of in the middle. Right. It reminds yeah. me of that area of Caracol that we roughly um, describe of like an amphitheater kind right, of Right, sure. Yes, absolutely. Because it yeah. also has that sudden drop. Right. Like and, and maybe the people were down below, way off, you know, down below looking up at the, I don't know. But yeah, so it's, it looks like a nice yeah. elite kind of absolutely. exclusive yes. area for a ceremony or something. Yeah, like right. But again, this is 600 to 800 BC, wow. the round structure. Which is a lot yeah, earlier yeah, than, than Caracol, yeah. But interesting. Yep. So we'll walk around uh, and get on this, the, the other range structure over here, and I'll talk about what I found in court three. They found uh, 16 slate slabs all piled on this bench in this room right here. And these are about the, you know, the, the width of a pool table and about like that wide. And so they called this a slate workshop. We think now it's probably more a storage area of these slate slabs. And we know here at Pacti Tune that these slabs were used for burials because they were found in structure one over the tomb there. And then when I excavated my center unit down here in court three, I found a number of these slate slabs in the center. Uh, and it wound up, I, I've got a total of 11 burials I found in 10 years. Eight of them are down in the center of court three. Wow. So the center unit on the eastern side, we found a cis burial with one individual. And as we were clearing the rest of the unit, we found the second cis burial, which had three people in it. Then I found slate slabs in disarray, like they had previously covered a burial and they had then been piled to the side of it. Oh, there's our howling monkeys. We've got a family of about four or five howling monkeys, which frequent the site, which is really nice. It's a fairly new addition. So uh, down at the under the area where the slate slabs were, I found a burial with uh, atlatl finger loops made out of conch shell and fragments of carved marble. And the marble is actually a Lua Valley style marble vase. Uh, I've done the isotopes and uh, my colleague has had done the isotopes in Honduras and it does come from the Olua Valley. That's where the marble was from. Why it was here at Pacbe Tune, we don't know, but that was carved in the Olua Valley of Honduras and brought here. So we found about 40% of it, it was smashed. It was outside and inside the burial. The burial had clearly been disturbed because it was the dirt from the burial was above the plaster floor. So it was never repaired after the burial was disturbed. So we believe that it was a, uh, disturbed at the abandonment of the site. The, the graves themselves are 800 AD, but I believe the disturbance was very shortly after it was buried. They spread most of the contents of the burial within a few meters around that grave. There was a second individual who was undisturbed in that same burial. Only, they only went to the first one. The first one was the only one with grave goods. Uh, they had jade, he had inlaid, or she had inlaid teeth. It, so it was clearly an elite burial. Uh, but like I said, I got all of my burial practice done in one season down there. Because <laughs> there were eight total burials down there. Have, have those burial remains been tested We've, so far as to say which one local? Yes, we are just getting that data in. I'm just working on that publication right now yeah the other thing I'm waiting for is the male female and any other determinations that uh, Sherry Gibbs is going to be giving us those bones in the report yeah so it's fun I also the next year came and excavated this building this is called structure 29 so 
did a two meter trench up here expecting to find stairs and things like that. Uh, got about halfway up with stairs from the bottom as expected. Then we found a flat level and rooms going across. So I followed the rooms out across. But as they kept coming in, I kept going, where's the floor? Where's the floor? Right? And so when I, the guys that are excavating here keep getting lower and lower with no burials, we're just going through. And then we found two walls that were about that far apart. They go down to that level that's halfway down. So I've got Whoa. nine foot of perfectly great stone walls going up. So this was an alleyway between a north and a south building. Mm -hmm. I've got nine foot of perfectly, just like those walls, perfectly constructed going up to almost the top here, within that far of the top here. And what they did is they put a burial when they terminated this or, and, and decided to fill it in and make it one building, just like they did the spine wall there. They put a burial in here facing west. All of the other burials face south usually, head to the south. This one's head to the west to follow the, the side of the alleyway. And they filled it in with slate slabs and other debris. And then they had the level here and they built another set of rooms on top, which aren't in great condition. But everything below here, it's like a two story now uh, area, is in perfect great condition. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they were using them simultaneously, but they're, like I said, halfway down, there's a whole set of rooms that's somewhat filled in, and then there's another set of rooms up here with a filled in alleyway going right through here that had cat, you know, slate capstones across here that were just kind of messed up, and then a burial at the very bottom of this. So this was a pretty exciting two seasons there and here. And this is all that, from what I can tell, this, all of this, all of these buildings here were developed, built in about 550, 600 AD. They weren't, there was nothing here before that. So this was, hmm. these, these have, court one and court two have pre-classic uh, structures like the round structure. This has nothing. I don't know if they removed everything or if this was not an area they used. They needed to extend and they put all these other buildings up in the late classic during the fluorescence of the site. So that would be when we were about total population of five to 10,000. That just uh, had me uh, uh, thinking about something. You yeah. said there's nothing there, but the structure seems to have been. Right. Any possibility, any, any testing of the soil to say or suggest that probably it was used as a garden? It's, it's possible, but it's all marl down there. It's, it's got about that much topsoil and then it's white marl. And I've gone down as far as I can get guys into the white marl. And they may have, like I said, it may have been something, they may have carved it all out and used the stone. You know, it could be an old quarry pit that they decided to repurpose. I have, you know, I don't know. But whatever was here, if there was anything, is definitely gone. No evidence of any kind of water storage? Yeah, that I looked, it's possible. I've thought about that as well, but I don't have any like high tide lines or anything around where you have calcite deposited from large term water storage. Yeah, and then like I said, if you're adventurous, you can go over to the smallest courtyard, which is only about two meters wide. Just go across the saddle here and look at the big tree over uh, to the north here. Yeah, that's an interesting area. I really want to excavate that someday because it's just tiny. It's a tiny, tiny courtyard. Or I think it may be like an entrance with, you know, facades or something. I don't know. We can go over there next. And Oh, yeah, believe me, there's a lot of interesting stuff that can still be done here at Pack the Tomb. Middle pre-classic houses, probably the first houses on the site. And there are two sets of them here. So you have the large square buildings that you can see that are on the upper level. That's the platform for the house. Uh, at the lower level, you have the first structures, which are kind of these triangular oval structures that are running across the, uh, you can see they make these large curves and go back out. And they're kind of triangles with rounded edges on them. 
Yes. Those are about 800 BC, Terry. Yes. Wow. So the the ovals are about 800 BC, and you can see the post holes that uh, Terry's been exposing down here for the photos. Um, that would be even potentially earlier occupation, but we believe this is the original uh, habitation. This is where thousands upon thousands of marine shell beads in all different stages mm -hmm. with all the tools have been found. And so we believe just like they carve slate and send that out, they carve granite, send that out. We believe in the middle pre-classic, they were making like many other sites, uh, marine shell beads as the, the industry that they were uh, using to advance the their site. Any, any trace of the original the, the original what? Yeah, we get the full shelves as well, and all. I, I read somewhere that during the like the classic, some of the shelves, like two shelves, found mm -hmm. to be more of the Pacific. Um, oh, uh, that I, I right. And then mm -hmm. as it goes, like it's moving into the classic period, mm -hmm. that slight sort of increase or presence of Atlantic side. Atlantic uh, we, that's something we would we really want to, to note, but I think the organisms that we're looking at here are common in both Pacific and Atlantic. So, but we do find them in all stages, and it's in the thousands. So it's a, it's an incredibly diver, you know, crafting on a large scale for a community of fifty people, right? So they definitely yeah. they yeah. definitely would have been affected in the late. Late well, this, like I said, this is uh, this is middle preclassic. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, the, in the late preclassic, we're doing granite and maybe slate. Is, is what we can tell. Yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. And of course, they did granite in that time. We just haven't found any evidence of production. Like we, all the production we find is late classic production. Mm -hmm. So, well, we'd love to find a middle preclassic granite workshop. Then we could combine our research efforts. <laughs> and how does it compare time-wise with Cajal Petch? Uh, this is uh, the same time period as the early Cajal Petch. Uh, we, we don't find uh, like Cuneal ceramics very often, but they don't either. So it is very oh, comparable. Yeah. I'm not going to get in. I don't know which one is actually first. These buildings actually, you can see between even the oval ones, there's about a meter separation. And between the, the uh, rectangular ones, there's a meter separation. So both the 800 and the 600 BC houses are on a pattern where they have alleyways between the houses. And we have evidence of, you know, when you do the other stuff that's still backfilled, you have 16 different houses from the two eras in here. And they go on the other side of this building. So this building, the plaza used to be both sides of that building. And the building was put up to divide Plaza B and Plaza B into two separate plazas in the late classic period. So, uh, for that one, no. For we haven't done. Uh, Paul's put in a trench. You can see it there, through into eight. But we haven't done any work on eight. It's about a hundred meters long, going this way, and it separates Plaza B from Plaza D. But it used to. These buildings are found on both sides of that building, so the original community was centered, we think, in this area. And how far it goes out into Plaza B, we don't know, but there's all, multiple buildings set on a grid in both the oval type buildings and the rectangular, later rectangular buildings. Is that stone bedrock? Uh, it's probably bedrock or whatever, but it is, it is in the house. So it was, that's, that was the floor level that was still there. You'd have to go up and over it went in this rectangular house period. <laughs> Maybe that was supposed to be the bed. It could be, absolutely. <laughs> they may have carved it off and said, hey, that's a good bed. I know workers sometimes like it for that. <laughs> yeah. What time is it, guys? 11.40. So, I was waiting for the other people to... Ooh, dude. Yeah. I certainly can't do 
<laughs> the, the explanation the justice that Terry can. So what's she doing now? Uh, we're spraying it because I've got to about three hours worth of photogrammetry photographs to take in here. We're trying to get it the colors as consistently across as, as possible, get everything tamped down. I have about like 600 photos to take. And what's Terry's affiliation? Uh, it's Terry Powis uh, from Kennesaw State University in Atlanta, Georgia area. Yeah, my uh, my daughter went there. Ah, yes. What did she take there? But they have anthropology. They have. Uh, it's a geography and anthropology department. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nice they can work with music. Yeah. <laughs> I can ask them to turn it off if you'd like it for your video. And go to the Pac Betoon website at pacbetoonarchaeology.com. It's where I got all the texts and maps and photos for this video. Also there, under the multimedia tab, are the whistle videos that Sheldon mentioned using real whistles excavated at the site. Hey, thanks for viewing this video. If you're interested, there's a book out by Terry Powis, Sheldon Skaggs, and George Micheletti, the editors of An Archaeological Reconstruction of Ancient Maya Life at Pak Bitun, Belize. It's available on Amazon. And thanks for tuning in to another episode from my 2022 Belizean My Adventure. If you want to join the IMS, go to their website at instituteofmayastudies.org and pull down on the registration tab. That's one word, instituteofmayastudies.org. And if you'd like to receive monthly issues of the At Slander e-magazine, Contact yours truly, Jim Reed, at mayaman at bellsouth.net. Thank you all.